Hello, Year 7. Welcome to our lesson on parallel lines. So the first space to fill in is a transversal. A transversal is the name that we give to a line that is intersecting two or more other lines that are usually parallel. Okay, not always parallel. But for our sake, we're going to be looking at ones that are parallel. So here we have two lines. If I draw a line, a straight line that crosses through both of those lines, that line would be called a transversal. Just a fancy name. Okay, now the transversal forms special pairs of angles when it crosses parallel lines. Okay, so this is definitely just for parallel lines. There are three types of angles that we need to know about. The first type of angle we call corresponding angles. Okay, now corresponding angles are always equal. Okay, now to help you identify when you have corresponding angles, you can remember that they always form an F shape. Now let me show you what that means. So here is my first set of parallel lines here and I have my transversal cutting it. If I were to look at this angle here and this angle here, if I were to draw the arms on there, the arms on that angle and the arms on the second angle and join them together, you can see that that makes an F shape. So those two angles are corresponding angles and they will be equal. Now the F shape doesn't always have to be the right way around. It can be back to front, it can be upside down, it can be back to front end, upside down. So there's a second one here. Let's draw an upside down back to front F here like that, which means that this angle here and this one here would be corresponding angles as well. Okay, the next type of angles that we need to learn about are called alternate angles. These angles are also always equal. Now they form a different shape. They form a Z shape. Let me show you that on these diagrams here. If I were to mark in that one and that one. Let's draw the arms on. So arms of that angle and the arms of that angle. And you can see, well I've actually drawn a backwards one, haven't I? A backwards Z. So it can be backwards and forwards just like the, the F shape from the previous one. Let's draw another one on this second one over here. I could draw an angle in here and in here. If I were to draw the arms on, you can see that that looks a little bit more like a normal Z shape. So the zigzag, zigzagging angles like that are called alternate angles and they are always equal. All right, the third type of angle we call co-interior angle, angles. Now these ones are not equal, they are supplementary. So maybe you remember that word from a few lessons ago. Supplementary just means that those angles equal 180 degrees. Okay, when you see them on your diagrams, they will form a C shape. Again, can be a normal C or it could be a backward C. So let's draw a forward C first, like this one here. That would be a C shape in there, which would mean this angle and the one below it. Now I'm giving them different symbols because these angles aren't equal, remember? They're adding to give 180 degrees. So those two angles would be co-interior or I could have a backward C here like this. And let's do some different markings for these ones. Maybe we'll do some arcs like that and across. 
those two angles would be co-interior, making the backwards C shape. Okay, so hopefully that will help you identify them. Let's have a look on the next page for the questions that we need to do. So it says, you can use the information above to find the value of angles without using a protractor because most of the diagrams that we're going to be giving you aren't to scale anyway. So please don't try to use a protractor. We need to use these rules. So find the value of A in the following diagrams and give a reason for each answer. There it is again, giving the reasons. Okay, so here we have some parallel lines in question A here. Parallel lines in our transversal. So what I would like you to do is to use one of your colored pens to help you draw in the arms of your angles. So let's look at this 115 degrees. The arms are there and the angle A, those are the arms of angle A. And if you draw them on there, you can actually see the shape that is being formed. And that one you can see is a Z shape. So that one we called alternate angles. You can look back on the other page. I know it's going to be tricky to remember these names at first, but keep practicing and you will get them. So remember, alternate angles are always equal. So that means that A must be equal to 115 degrees. And we write our reason in the brackets. So this one was called alternate angles, which we can shorten to alt angles like that. And alternate angles mean that those angles are equal. And that's done. On to part B. Okay, let's draw the arms on there. The arms of the 55, the arms of the A. So sometimes you need to just make the arms a bit longer to join them up. And you can see that that's kind of an upside down back to front F shape. So those ones were called corresponding angles and they are always equal. So again, A is going to be equal to that 55 degrees. The reason is corresponding angles, which we can shorten to corisp angles. Don't just shorten to co because there we have a third one, remember, that also starts with co. So corisp, please, corisp angles. And that means that those angles are equal. And that's done. And part C. Let's draw the arms on there. And the other one. Okay, so that's a C shape. A little bit turned around, but it is a C shape, which means that those two angles add to give 180 degrees. So we write that as an equation. We've got A plus 110 is equal to 180 degrees. Now we write our reason. This is the other co one. So we write co int for co interior angles and co interior angles equal 180 degrees. Okay, now we still have to find out what A is equal to because we had this 110 here. So I would need to subtract 110 from the 180. So that's equal to 70 degrees. And that's it. That's the three rules for today.